I want to thank Laura and Fernando for inviting me to this magnificent event. I have the opportunity and the fortune to be in Lisbon also. And it's very interesting and amazing for me to be able to see how we can have more interest every day from doctors who no matter what specialties they have, they want to learn about medical cannabis. This is a challenge that we are all facing as uh, scientists and doctors because medical cannabis uh, looks like it's a new science, <coughs> new treatment, but as much, most of you know, it's not. It's been around for centuries, so it is our time now to rediscover all the properties the medical cannabis has. Uh, in this time, I want to talk about epilepsy and cannabis. This is a subject and a pathology that uh, takes a lot of my attention. I work for a foundation with children with epilepsy. And for me, the fact to see the impact the cannabis has with these patients, specifically in the pediatric population, and the impact it does on the patient and on the family is incredible because, as you know, um, medical cannabis is being used for treating refractory epilepsy. Uh, as you know, refractory means patients that they are already using two, three, even four medications, and it's not working for them. So cannabis is an alternative very important for these patients. They haven't been able to find the, the proper treatment. Even some of these patients had to go for surgery. So in these cases, CBD provides for a very important alternative. This is a little bit about me, about what I've been doing. I'm actually a professor of the Faculty of Medicine of University in Panama. What we're trying to do, uh, as Michael said, is been trying to educate doctors and healthcare practitioners about uh, the applications of medical cannabis. So I think it's very important that all of you are here because that is proving that you have the interest uh, to learn and to know uh, a little bit more. As I, as I was saying, uh, cannabis, um, it's been shown anticonvulsant properties for many centuries. We have a, an Arab doctor, uh, Al Mayusi, described the anticonvulsant effect after the nasal application of the extract uh, of cannabis sativa leaves and show that these patients improve with this. Also, we have a Persian doctor uh, in the century 15 before Christ described the efficacy of the tra treatment for seizures. So we see here that this is not a new treatment, it's being explored for, for thousands of years. So it's important for, for us uh, to know that we are rediscovering this uh, amazing molecule. Uh, the important thing of this presentation is I'm trying to walk you through all what is the preclinical data, the clinical data, and uh, discuss what is the evidence we have uh, with uh, uh, cannabinoids treating epilepsy, and also discuss the side effects that we can have and the adverse reactions that we can have with cannabis. Since cannabis is a very noble uh, molecule, it has to be treated with responsibility, and it has a very precise uh, indications. Uh, as you know, uh, can, uh, can epilepsy is still a very challenging uh, pathology. Despite of the introduction of many anti-epileptic medications, still 30% uh, uh, of the patients uh, are resistant to the treatment. Epilepsy is one of the most common neurological conditions affecting, affecting actually 50 million uh, patients globally. We see here how uh, the patients with epilepsy have to face uh, to treat, be treated with all these type of medications. We have steroids, gabapentin, carbamazepine, and all this big list. And even these patients, they've been treating all these medications, they cannot find the response uh, for at least reducing the amount of seizures. 
So in these cases is that we see cannabis uh, providing a big value uh, in these patients. Uh, the endocannabinoid system uh, has very important functions and uh, they are um, mod moderate the appetite, the sleeping, the mood and the memory. We, have, uh, we know that THC is a partial agonist of CB1 and CB2 receptors and CBD is an agonist of the 5-HETA1 and another uh, enzymes and um, receptors. Uh, it's very important to know that the CB1 receptor inhibits the release of neurotransmitters like glutamate and GABA. This is important because in here we will see the, the physiopathology of how is the epilepsy uh, developed. So GABA and glutamate have a very important role in the uh, development of epilepsy. Uh, as we've seen here, again, more about the endocannabinoid system, the way the CB1, CB2 receptor works, and uh, allows us to see that the uh, homeostasis of the endocannabinoid system is the one who keeps the patient in a, in a good stage. When you have an imbalance on the endocannabinoid system, is that the patients start presenting different type of uh, ailments. Uh, uh, exogenous uh, and uh, cannabinoids can produce uh, changes in the neuromodulation of GABA glutamate, serotonin, and dopamine, and also increases uh, anandamide. Uh, specifically with epilepsy, we're going to talk about cannabidiol. Cannabidiol is the second most prevalent molecule in the cannabis plant. Uh, is the principle uh, of the components that has a non-psychotropic uh, action and is a very attractive molecule because it's very noble and it has a very broad potential and also has very minimum side effects. So that's what is uh, important for us to use it uh, in, a proper, in a proper way. It has a poor affinity to, to the CB1 receptor. The CBD, uh, some studies shown that uh, so, uh, the anti-epileptic action of the CBD uh, is occurs through the inhibition of the excitatory glutamatergic uh, neurotransmission. There is many uh, mechanisms that we can observe by, uh, by the ones the CBD acts. We have, uh, we have still not clear which ones are the more important, but we can see the CBD has uh, an effect in different neurotransmitters and in different receptors. CBD acts uh, through the uh, antagonism or agonism or different receptors. One of them is the 5-HTA, there is the serotonin receptor that is the one in charge of the relaxation, of controlling depression, of controlling mood, controlling the uh, quality of sleeping of the patients. We also have the CBD acting through the TRVP1, a vanilloid receptor that is the one in charge of the nociception of the perception of pain. Uh, so this is very important because the CVD acts in this TRVP a vanilloid receptor and is in charge of uh, produce anti-inflammation and analgesia. There is another very important receptor that uh, has an interaction with the CVD and is the GPR55. This receptor is the one who, uh, when you have this uh, receptor increased, you found there is more uh, cellular proliferation. So the antagonism of those uh, CPR55 receptors provide to the patient the capability to have anti-tumoral effects. Uh, there's many other uh, receptors that I've been found around like 60. They have interactions with the CVD. I'm just talking about the most important right now that we have to um, consider because we have clear the THC acts on the CB1 and CB2 receptors, but, but the CVD has a very wide variety of interactions. As we mentioned, we have clear uh, CB1 and CB2 receptor with THC. Uh, uh, THC has been demonstrated to have properties also as anticonvulsant, but in certain studies uh, they saw 
that even can be pro-convulsant. So we have in here to keep doing some research because there is certain patients that they don't respond as well to the THC, but it's a very minimum uh, group. Uh, the CB1 receptor is located widely in the cerebral cortex, basal ganglia, hippocampus, and the cerebellum. And it's in there that it has, has all his action um, helping the seizures and helping the patients to reduce the epileptic uh, status. Uh, the antagonism of the CB1 receptor and epileptic neurons can trigger epileptic form discharges in the EEG. And this can cause status epilepticus. So we have to be very aware of these interactions with the receptors and uh, with the antagonist, uh, antagonism of the CB1 receptor. Uh, the endocannabinoid system is implicated in the regulation, duration, and frequency of the epileptic crisis. Uh, this is very important because it's in charge of the moderation of the neuronal excitability. Uh, now we're going to the clinical and preclinical evidence. We have these studies that they were doing uh, in vitro. In here, they were using a canamimetic drug that it was called WIN55. Uh, what they did is they, is they used in vitro slice of hippocampal tissue, and they were using this uh, um, WIN55. Uh, it's a CB1 receptor agonist, and they show that this uh, agonist um, improved the epileptiform activity in these in vitro models. Uh, in these models, it was shown that the CB1 receptor was significantly increased in the, rejection, in the regions of the hippocampus with the uh, epileptic activity. We have another model that it was used um, uh, with uh, anandamide and another endocannabinoids. And what they wanted to prove is, again, the use of endocannabinoids in the treatment of the epileptic uh, uh, status. Uh, in here is a conclusion that we have the, that the cannabidiol displays anti-epileptic anti form and anti-seizure pro properties in vitro and in vivo. We uh, also, they did uh, studies uh, in vivo in mice, and they were inducing seizures with pilocarpine, penicillin, and different types of medications. And they were administrating as preventive CBD doses, and they demonstrated the neuroprotective effect that the CBD was uh, uh, showing in, this, uh, in these models. Uh, besides the CBD and the THC, uh, CBDV and THCV uh, is being demonstrated in mice. This is preclinical uh, to have an effect important in the epilepsy. Uh, everybody knows Epidiolex. They also had their own studies, uh, and it's basically the same that we talked before. They showed that CBD significantly attenuated the status epileptic uh, with uh, patients with uh, mice stimulated with local field potentials. Also uh, demonstrated the reduction of the seizures and in, vit in vivo and in vitro models, and they didn't find uh, neuronal or motor deficits because they're trying to uh, find the, the safety. Uh, in vitro, the effect of the CBD on an epileptiformic local field potential uh, induced hippocampal brain. They, f they found a very good response to the epidiolex. Uh, they have five uh, models of animals and they found that the tol tolerability uh, didn't have uh, uh, any problems, and, they, uh, they, and the mice didn't exert any motor deficit. We have in here a review that it was made on uh, 2017. This review was made by the National Academies of, of Science, uh, Engineer, and Medicine. In this review, they uh, took 20,000 articles and from those 20,000 articles, they choose 10,000, and they started reviewing by one, 
one by one and trying to see which of those articles are where are the one they have better evidence and they are put in different uh, in different groups in here they put a, a group with conclusive or substantial evidence of effect they were trying to find which ones have more studies and with be better outcomes of the effects of cannabis. Uh, then uh, they put another group, the moderate uh, evidence and limited evidence and no evidence. Uh, the point here is we're seeing that of those 20,000 studies, the disease or the ailments that they find more scientific evidence were in chronic pain in adults anti-emetic in chemotherapy, and pediatric treatment of uh, resistant epilepsy. Uh, so I'm bringing this uh, graphic because we see in here that epilepsy is one of the ailments that so far has more scientific evidence this day. Uh, either way, um, they say, you know, that the gold standard for evidence is double-blind, randomized, placebo, controlled. Uh, we have a lot of studies in, uh, in this design. The group of populations are not too big, but either way, they can con be considered statistically significant. Uh, but uh, we see that with epilepsy, we are we're in a good point, but it doesn't mean that we don't need more, more studies. We can see here that uh, since uh, 1978, uh, Meshulam started, uh, started studying effects of um, cannabis in, in epilepsy. Um, these are uh, now studies, clinical studies made in humans. We have this study that it was made in 2018. It was published at the um, medical magazine Epilepsy and Behavior. Uh, in this study, they were treating 60 patients. They were using around 8 to 12 milligrams per kilogram of CVD in every patient. And the main outcome that they want to uh, uh, find in this uh, study was the tolerability and the safety uh, of these doses of 8 milligrams per kilogram in the patients. And they found that the 21% of the patients were seizure-free. This is very, very important number. The 10% had more than 90% of improvement. And the 4.5% have between 75 and 90% of improvement. They didn't find improvement in 22%, but none of the patients got uh, uh, worse. So this is very important because in here we're seeing the clearly the cannabidiol exerts a very important um, uh, action in a reduction of, of the seizures in these patients. Uh, this is another study that it was made in the Sick Children's Hospital in Toronto. They had 66 patients. They were using a different combination here. They were using a combination of CBD, 100 milligrams, uh, and uh, um, 2 milligrams of THC. Uh, they started to do this treatment because they want to uh, um, see another combination because, as you see, most of the studies are being made with cannabidiol isolated. So they want to put some THC because we cannot forget that it's very important to see the entourage effect that in certain uh, uh, cases uh, works better for some patients. So they did this uh, study with CBD THC, very minimum amount of THC, and the outcome was really good. In these patients, uh, they started with uh, doses from uh, 8 to 16 milligrams per kilogram per day of CBD and from 0.03 to 0.42 uh, milligrams per kilogram of THC. As you see, very minimum amount of THC. Uh, what they, the outcome that they saw is first, the patient uh, reduced uh, the amount of seizures. Uh, they improved the quality of life. That was one of the main things that they want to demonstrate in this uh, 
in this uh, study uh, the quality of sleeping and they also measuring the, the development and the cognition in these patients. Uh, another outcome that they were looking, it was safety, and they found in these patients, those patients that they were using clobazam, they found that the levels of clobazam were increased because when you're using CBD with clobazam, uh, what it happens is the um, active, uh, active uh, molecule of the clobazam, that is the N-desmethyl clobazam, gets increased in uh, serum levels. So what the patients express was uh, an increase of somnolence. So that was the way that in this study they were seeing that they had to reduce the amount of clobazam because this is an interaction that usually happens in these patients. And we have to be careful because a lot of patients they are having a, a refractory epilepsy, are being treated with clobazam. So it's not to be afraid of the clobazam, it's just to be very cautious and do measurements of the patients. In these cases, when you're going to start a patient to treat uh, with CBD, the first thing that you have to do is liver enzymes at the beginning, uh, at, at one month, second month, third month, because it's important to monitorize, uh, because you can have uh, even elevation of transaminases, but this elevation it occurs more when the patients are using valproic acid. So with the Clobazam, the important thing is monitorize the levels, and if you see the somnolence or these effects reported by the patients or by the families, what you do is you reduce the, the, the uh, doses of Clobazam. Uh, even in these patients, in, in some group of the patients, they reduce the dose of Clobazam, and the patient got uh, stabilized. But in another patients, they didn't reduce the doses, and they found out that after a while, uh, it, it was resolved without doing anything. But this was in this study. Uh, in your private practice, the idea is to keep monitorizing the side effects that the patients report. And if you see that one of the side effects of the Clobazam is being uh, increased, immediately you reduce the the amount of clobazam. There is actually certain cases uh, uh, in, the, uh, in those that you have to just to stop uh, the, the, or the clobazam or the CBD. Uh, definitely it's very important in epilepsy to know that the main goal of using cannabinoids or cannabidiol is not to reduce completely the other medications for the patients. This is, uh, these are patients that are on two, three, or four medications, and the idea is not just to stop all the medications they're taking. What you have to do is just keep the medications the patient is talking at the cannabidiol and evaluate the response. It's on a discretion of the neurologist or the epileptologist if the size that they can reduce one or two, or if just keep the other they're taking, because these patients, even taking three or four, they're not improving, so you add like a third or fourth. There's cases reported that even some patients ended up with nothing but CBD, but this is a case that it has to be evaluated closely by each and every uh, doctor, in this case the neurologist or the epileptologist that is treating the patient, but it's very important to see how uh, with these combinations, CBD, THC, uh, they found that it was safe and well tolerated. Um, in general terms, and after reading a lot of studies in epilepsy, what I've seen is that most of the studies that they have done with uh, cannabidiol, uh, they have to use very high doses of CBD in order to achieve uh, a good effect. When you add uh, the THC, you can use less doses, and it's even better for the patient uh, because first, uh, it's cheaper to have to use 
uh, less doses of cannabidiol because the cannabidiol is more expensive. And also, the patient ob obtains the other benefits of the uh, entourage effect. So, but that's uh, very personalized and it has to be assessed by every, every doctor and assessed by every type of patient because we're talking in here about refractory epilepsy, but the, the epilepsy that is being demonstrated by studies is particularly in Dravet syndrome and Lennox-Gastaut. They are doing now another studies they are including more uh, uh, other types of epilepsies, but so far is Dravet and Lennox, the, the ones that are approved. Uh, we have now this study, there is the, the GW Pharma, they had 166 patients. They started from uh, doses from five milligrams per kilogram per day, and they started escalating the doses for the patients until they got to 20 milligrams per kilo per day. Those are like very high doses and what they found in this study, they did it, this was a placebo double blind uh, control uh, randomized study, very complete study, and they created a phase one, phase two, phase three. So they've been adding on and on and on different types of patients, more number of patients. So they've been doing like good job in into trying to create create a, a real a really good standard of a, of study. Uh, and in these patients, uh, the main side effect that they found was the somnolence, the anorexia. It was very important, and a lot of these patients, the mother, withdraw the treatment because the, the children were losing a lot of weight. So it's very important when you're treating these patients to explain the mother about uh, all the side effects that they can have and assess what are the risks and the benefits for, the, for these patients. They also reported diarrhea, somnolence, but there were no fatalities related with this treatment, which tell us that it's a very noble treatment for this type of patients that there is hard for them to find another another options we have more in here of the other studies that JW is been conducting multi-centric randomized placebo controlled and um, we have in here that this is the presentation of epidiolex uh, uh, of course in uh, the outcome of this uh, a study, they showed the, the patients that were using the cannabidiol, the Epidiolex, uh, reported a reduction of the seizures from 40% to 5%. Uh, different from the patients with the placebo, they reported a, a change from the 409 to 14 Point two. The reduction with the placebo was very little. But a very uh, interesting effect is that uh, uh, there was uh, patients that with the placebo were report, reporting improvement. So we have to see in here that uh, sometimes the placebo and, and the, because this is a type of treatment that the mothers are looking because they're desperate, it's also the, the, the mental setting that it makes them believe so much that this is going to help that in some cases even placebo works but definitely was contundent that the patients given being given with the epidiolex uh, improved like the 50 percent uh, uh, besides of the placebo that the improvement was like 0.5 uh, percent uh, as i was talking to you before uh, in the, very important is here to contemplate the liver panel for the patients and, and considerate uh, uh, transaminase and uh, levels of clobazam, valproic acid. You have to measure in blood. Uh, most uh, of the most important anti-epileptic medications the patient is taking in order to assess if it's been uh, any type of interaction. Uh, uh, the dosing and admi administration, the Epidiolex recommended was uh, started with an initial dosis of 2.0 milligrams per kilogram per, uh, twice a day, 
and they increased uh, five milligrams per kilogram twice a day. This was what they were using in their study. Uh, as I said, this has to be very personalized because all the patients are different and they have different conditions. So this is not like a guideline that you should follow, it's what they did in the study. I think uh, the treatment has to be customized uh, according to the patient. We have here the main side effects that were occurring with, the, with this treatment. And as I see, there's no serious side effects or death in here. They, they can be tolerable and easy to manage. Um, the drug interaction, as I said, with the clovazam, with the valproic acid. Uh, very important to know that also the CBD interacts with other medications like phenytoin and carbamazepine uh, that uh, decreases the, the ser seric levels of them. And the even uh, treatments like ketoconazole uh, increases the levels of CBD. So uh, it's important to, to be aware of the interactions. Uh, here we've seen a, a special a study uh, where they showed that this was a patient that they were using a cannabis, and after they stopped the cannabis, they presented a status epilepticus and their convulsions got worse. But this is a very small number, but it's important to present all the statistics and the, and the reviews. Uh, this was a, another study that it was made because now we're facing something very, um, uh, that is preoccupant because since uh, is so many publicity about treatment of epilepsy and CBD, there is a lot of families and patients that are desperate and they go everywhere and they buy whatever people tell them see in the streets. So it's very important to, to tell the patients that they have to be careful with what they buy and they actually, this is a treatment that has to be prescribed by the neurologist or the epileptologist because the patients are buying uh, a lot of products, they are not standardized and they even the labels don't say the truth of what the med uh, product has. Uh, they did a, a review in Australia in the, in the United States and they got certain uh, 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 jars with a product called uh, CBD rich and they found that had very little CBD and very high, high amounts of, of THC. So this is a challenge that we're all facing and, uh, and with the governments and with the regulators and with the Minister of Health that we definitely and desperately need standardized product because it's very, very hard for doctors uh, to, and for patients to prescribe a treatment that you don't know what is in there. So that's why we need the governments to be able to regulate, regulate and for the doctor to know that it's being approved for the government. So you can use some type of treatment and you as a doctor, you feel safe prescribing something that you know what it has. Because with this, what happens is every day patients come to you and say, I bought this, can I take it? And as a doctor, you don't know what it says in there and you don't even know if what says in there is truth because all these products, a lot of them are being tested and they don't say the truth. So very important, and this is a call for the authorities and for the regulators we need standardized products for the sake of the patients and for the sake of us doctors because we cannot prescribe something that we don't feel comfortable uh, with. Um, another important molecule is the cannabidiberine. They're being stu uh, doing studies too because is uh, they are proving the value of this uh, CBDB uh, in the treatment of epilepsy. GW started a study. I think soon we're going to be seeing the the results. This is very important because this is the uh, release of the American Epilepsy Society. And they are saying the recent anecdotal reports of positive effects of cannabidiol for some individuals with treatment-resistant epilepsy give reason for hope. 
However, we must remember that these are only anecdotal reports and robust scientific evidence for the use of cannabis is lacking. I just show you like 20 studies, and this is just a review that I did, but we have more than 20 studies. Uh, so uh, for me, I mean, I respect their position, but I do think that we have a lot of evidence in, in uh, epilepsy. Of course, we have to keep building more, more, uh, more evidence and doing more research because this is, this is something important for the patients and for the doctor that, that, that we can feel more comfortable doing. But it says the lack of information doesn't mean that cannabis is ineffective for epilepsy. So this statement, uh, they are, they are saying, I, I don't think they are committing with, uh, with much. Uh, we do see that we have a lot of evidence with epilepsy, but we still have to keep uh, trying to build more evidence. Uh, in here, we have the conclusions. We have the CBD is a very safe uh, treatment. Uh, very important, the education for the patients, not just for the doctors, because uh, the patients, uh, when they feel that the doctor is not with them step by step, they start increasing the doses, changing the treatment, and then they start having side effects or problems. And a treatment that is as good as this, it's, if it's not um, managed in a proper way, can turn into a disaster because the patient can, can have a side effect or maybe it's not going to work. So the patient is going to say, oh, it didn't work, but it's not that it didn't work. It's because they didn't know how to do it. So in here, education is the, is the key. And as I was saying, controlled human, human clinical trials are still required to keep confirming of be and have better understanding of all the interactions. And um, I think uh, this is very exciting moments because we have a lot of evidence, but I do see uh, a lot of interest from medical doctors uh, in learn about this. So I invite you to keep studying and learning and, and trying to build more uh, uh, clinical research. Thank you. So should I see me? So far, we have two questions in the app. You, I read the first one. You go first. Okay. So from Felipe Guimarães Torres. If, uh, yes, right over there. You mentioned the interaction between CBD, THC, and closed basam. Are there any known pharmacological interaction between cannabinoids and other benzodiazepines, benzodiazepine-like substances? <laughs> Say that 10 times yeah. fast. That's fine. She knows what I mean. Yeah, right. yeah. Yes, well, with benzodiazepines, there are, uh, the only thing that happens is they can increase the, the, the levels of, uh, let's say, uh, clonazepam. So, but it's not something that you see too dramatic, but you have to monitorize the patient because sometimes when you're, when you're giving uh, clonazepam to, to one of these patients, if you start seeing that it's more somnolent and uh, uh, the, the the, the pattern of the, the patient is changing, it's better to reduce or to measure the, the, the levels, but there, there's some interactions. We're, we're still figuring it out uh, because it's a lot of, it's a very long list of interactions, even with supplements and vitamins. So we have to be careful with that, but so far uh, it's easy to correct when you are aware that you have to uh, monitorize the enzymes in liver and uh, even the re renal expression. Uh, uh, those are the main uh, ways to excrete. Thank you, Sandra. For some reason it's not coming up on mine. Why don't you okay, so from Arturo Aguiar. Yes, right over there. Uh, thank you for the update on the subject. Do you have any experience using CBD as first line or adjuvant agent in brain-related epilepsy secondary to brain tumors, both benign or malignant? Well, um, uh, what I always say is uh, cannabis is not a first line uh, uh, treatment uh, so far and as, uh, as, uh, as far of the uh, data we have, uh, have uh, haven't been used uh, or reported in the literature as a first uh, use, but uh, definitely can have a lot of uh, 
potential in, in helping patients with, uh, with uh, tumors, as uh, Christina was uh, mentioning. Uh, but so far with epilepsy, it's not a first time, uh, first line treatment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Anna Rita Delgado. Thank you. Uh, three questions from Anna. I'll try to combine them. Uh, hardest first. Uh, apart, apart from clobazam, is that right, clobazam? Clobazam. Okay. Are there studies about the best anticonvulsant to use in combination with CBD? And what about your clinical experience doing that? Well, um, actually, clobazam is one of the more used, and carbamazepine and vulproic acid, and another that is called lamotrigine. lamotrigine uh, um, but there is not actually one specific anticonvulsant that you say that that is the, the recommended for these patients. We have to remember that these patients, when they come to the consultation, they're coming because they have refractory epilepsy, so they are already on two, three medications, so they are already taking what they're taking. And usually they start with one, it doesn't work, then they start with second one, it doesn't work. And even the statistics say that when a patient has to go to a third medication, the probabilities of success with the third or the fourth are very, very little. So it's not like a, a special uh, a combination with CBD that I know, but uh, as far as you are aware of the interaction, you can manage uh, the, the combination because sometimes it's not just one. I've seen patients that they are still with three, four medication plus the CBD. There's other that keep two, they keep one, but they're always on, on more than one. And there's also the, ca the cases that the patient manages like uh, uh, to end up just with the CBD, but that is just a discretion of the neurologist that is treating. It's, it's, you never uh, take a patient that comes to your consultation with four medications and you say, you know something, let's start CBD and let's stop the rest. You never do that because you can do something really bad to the, to the patient. And, and this is a treatment that is a coadjuvant. It's not like a single, single uh, treatment that will just uh, solve the, the problem. So. Okay, here's a follow-up from Anna. Um, are there any studies on the uh, efficacy and safety of long-term use of cannabinoids for refractory epilepsy? And what about the tolerance levels? Yes, uh, right now GW is doing a, a, a study there, I think there is very soon they're gonna ha we're gonna have the results. They're doing it like uh, long term, so we're gonna see. Uh, we still don't have because the main outcome that we want to see, or the the researchers doing in epilepsy want to see, is long term because we still don't have long term. And by long term, we will say five, ten, twenty years. Uh, but I think in in maybe three, four, five years, we will have a better idea. But as far as I've seen, uh, if you compare the damage that a status epileptic can do to a patient, the hypoxia, uh, the, the damage that just a convulsion can do to the brain, uh, and the benefits of being able to stop these uh, uh, seizures or improve the seizures in these patients gives you a, a little balance that what, what could be right uh, to do. Uh, so I, I think we're going to have that evidence uh, soon, but still not uh, a study revealing the long-term uh, effects. We, we, need, we need to know. Wonderful. Thank you, Sandra. So far, we don't have uh, any other question in the app. Is there anyone else wanting to place a question? Yes, we're... That means everybody wants to have lunch. Uh, not yet. <laughs> oh, I want to have oh, yeah, lunch. <laughs> We're now going to thank you. Thank you. Dr. Sandra. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.